Good morning, Danny. It's so nice to see you. Good morning, Cheryl. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And I'm even better today because, first of all, I get to talk to you, and I get to talk to you about Keith Haring. Thank you. It's such a cool piece that we have at the cathedral, and I feel like we're very lucky to have it. It's a piece of both graffiti and religious art at mm -hmm. the same time. Isn't that unique? That's a very good point you bring up, because when you think about religious art, and certainly this is a triptych, you think about triptychs, they aren't graffiti, and yet this one finds its roots right. in, in graffiti. Yeah. So what, what are triptychs usually? Like, what would you usually see as a triptych? Oil on canvas, and you would see an enunciation scene. Right. Uh, you may see the death of Christ. See? Right, so in this case, it's the life of Christ. Right. It's the life of Christ, and it's done with these really energetic, exciting uh, mark making that everyone can relate to. Keith Haring, his whole aesthetic, he took this, like his street art and his graffiti, which he used to do in chalk um, and stuff, right. which is no longer available. He, um, he applied it once um, to, to do this religious piece, and it's actually his only religious work, and it was done um, just a few weeks before his death, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that it, that speaks volumes in and of itself, that he approached this religious piece and then donated it to St. John the Divine before his death. And I think it's so interesting. What does that say about St. John the Divine, especially? Right, yeah. it's a house of worship for all people. For all people. And that in the 1980s, during this horrific AIDS crisis in New York City, that HIV and AIDS uh, patients could find sanctuary right. at St. John the Divine. And so that mission that they began with continued and continues to today and will continue way into the future. And he was able to find sanctuary. Most of his art um, is graffiti and it's, it's art that um, doesn't last very long. But this is a piece of bronze. It's in an edition of nine. So we have um, eight other ones uh, throughout the world um, at other churches. And so when you're looking at this altarpiece, um, you can experience uh, that universality of, of humanity and of us all being in the same boat, essentially. And so when we're looking at this piece um, in the church, it takes on new meaning. It truly is a global connection to humanity. I am always very excited to take people into St. Columba, the chapel in which the altarpiece is found. Right. Um, the St. Columba is dedicated to the people of the British Isles. And so there's a lot of what we call Norman um, architecture in the right. columns, these right, right. columns. Yeah. And the columns have this design to them, this kind of mark making. The patterns. On the, the patterns right, and such. Right. And to yeah. me, visually, as a curator, um, I love the curation here. I think it's right. absolutely brilliant because it relates to that kind of mark making. And we see mark making throughout cultures. Very early on in the caves of Lascaux, you see people who are um, depicting their lives. Right. And graffiti for a long time has gotten a kind of bad rap yeah. that it's an extension of um, disenfranchised communities or but in its core it is mark making it right. is people trying to tell their story communicate who they are exactly. and I feel like with this curation that you see that connection between uh, the Roman architecture and Keith Haring's altarpiece and when I bring people in and they see I'll ask them what do you see and they're so excited because it's so accessible. Right. You see a heart. And it's the heart shape that we all make as children. Or you're talking about the heart shape in, inside the altarpiece. Yeah, inside like, the, under the they cross. see a heart and they can read it. Right. They can see it. They can identify it. And it's right above the baby. And it's right above the baby. Then they see the baby, and the baby's in someone's arms. And all of this is a connection to right. their own lives, to humanity. And then when we get a little bit into the story then of Keith Haring and his own suffering and of human suffering, to be able to see it, because you already connected to it, you already read it, 
right but you, you see the humanity that there is an acceptance then there's an right. acceptance of yeah. people on the two wings of the altarpiece you see angels with wings yeah. um and it, it it's 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 really quite um amazing and and kind of sad that you know that he made this piece right before he himself um passed away and you know yes. in a way became an angel himself um and yeah. and and i still feel like he's looking over us um and, and and anyone looking at this piece can connect with that um i think thinking about the life of christ right and mm -hmm. and you think about the the beginning of his life where he was on his mother's lap and then the end of his life um and so just and everyone can connect even if you're not necessarily christian you can connect to the idea of of life and death and birth and rebirth so you you said you brought up the columns um but also the glass um yeah. glass windows that are behind the altarpiece are also um quite interesting they're they're more ornamental they're less narrative um so you have a real kind of like focus on the altarpiece when, when you're in um mm -hmm. this this chapel you look up and you see the the mosaics in this kind of um anglo-saxon ornamental shapes and stuff um and it's just it's just really interesting because it's it's different than all the other chapels around it you know i mean if you've been to saint john you know that a lot of the windows have these like very complex stories in them and stuff mm -hmm. and you know and sculptures and all this stuff but the it, but this chapel is a lot more subdued and so to have the keith herring altarpiece there i think gives it a, a, a much more um, intense focus so this chapel is like a jewel box it's a little gem that you must go into and experience because although our words are nice it is the to me one of the ultimate experiences of the cathedral i feel like i'm in this golden place this aura and it would take a person who an artist on his level that reconciled with that um his life um and his journey to make such an incredible piece that speaks to us all so much and like you said you feel the presence of an artist you feel the presence of somebody who has kind of transcended um within that space right I like how you bring up the word aura because I think that's really important to understand this piece. Mm -hmm. um, when looking at religious art in general, it's a lot of times you have religious art that's been taken out of its original context. So when you're looking at it at a museum, you'll see an altarpiece, um, mm -hmm. like an Annunciation scene and stuff, mm -hmm. outside of its original context, where it doesn't um, it doesn't totally make sense um, around mm -hmm. all the other stuff right. um, that's going on. And also when you look at graffiti usually as i mentioned earlier graffiti doesn't last very long and so mm -hmm. usually graffiti is on the street um and so in that way these two things coming together creates this very unique aura so where you have this graffiti fine art um in in its original context in in a context where um you could say mass right at this altar um and you could uh, experience the altar in the way where a religious art is is actually meant to be experienced mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really great point. I think that is that is so true. Um, and I think it speaks volumes to St. John the Divine that um, this, this, this piece, this altar piece, that is also a contemporary piece of art, finds a home right. in this space. Right. And it's whether you're coming to St. John the Divine to, um, to attend mass or you're coming for a meditation or you're coming for a yoga class yeah. or you're coming to just see the light pour out of the windows you're coming there to feel the microcosm of new york city which is in and of itself a diversity and a welcome to all you can really find in this space i feel so fortunate to be a part of this amazing community Danny, I am so excited that we got to have this conversation because, again, now this conversation alone is going to inform me and inform the way I face the day and the week and, and everything ahead. So I can't thank you enough for this. Well, thank you. I can't wait to go and look at that piece again because um, it's just going to be great to, to look at it and connect with the cathedral in that way. So I'm so you. excited. Yes. Thank you so much, Danny. Thank so you. So great to see you.